It's time for Inside Seminole Basketball with Leonard Hamilton, breaking down game-changing plays, momentum-shifting moves, can't-miss matchups, the inside scoop on the team and what's next for the Knolls as they look to make another tournament run. ABC 27 presents Inside Seminole Basketball with Leonard Hamilton, live from Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee. Sponsored by these businesses. Inside Seminole Basketball, we're on the air and welcome to our show at Glory Days in uh, Tallahassee. If we are in the area, come on by and we talk with head coach Leonard Hamilton every Monday night right here at Glory Days. And coach, uh, we, we were... Uh, rolling along, rolling along. All of a sudden, we ran into a butt on the road at Georgia Tech, and then we uh, played a team that just didn't miss three-point shots on Saturday. I've never seen such good shooting, but uh, all of a sudden, we got to get regrouped and get back and overcome some injuries and some illness and start playing Seminole basketball. Well, we, we have been void, Gene, of a lot of what I call basketball demons mm -hmm. that raise the ugly head. And uh, what has happened, well, we've, been, we've been fairly healthy over the years, and I don't think I've ever had an experience where we've had three guys, three starters that you, you don't have involved in your program all at one time. But what we, I think we need to do, we need to thank our fans for how supportive they have been and the wrapping their arms around of these guys and, and supporting them, do, especially during this period when we, we're going through some, some challenges. Uh, you, you, you never know how, the, the, how grieving has, the, what effect grieving has over, over a young man. And I know once I, I lost my... My, my two my brothers my two brothers and my mother three years in a row and it took his toll on me and I had oh, yeah. some challenges and Ray's going through something we had to keep him in our prayers and, and hope that we could he'll he'll be back at full strength and um, Caleb had a, a unusual type circumstance so you know he <clears throat> you know just he had um, he had that infection and he, he lost his energy but uh, to his credit he tried to go out on the court. And, and, and give us what he could when he found out that Ray was not going to be able to play and then obviously Malik injury. All of it happened at one time. But I, I'm, I'm proud of the fact that we have some youngsters now that are getting some playing time, that they are stepping up and growing right in the middle of the fire. And I think that we just need a few games for those guys to adjust and we'll get that Seminole spirit back out there. And I'm looking forward to moving into next Wednesday game so that we can kind of get that bit of taste out of our mouth. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you that uh, Florida State, we got a, a road game on Wednesday. We play at Clemson. Then we come home and we play a 12 noon game against Wake Forest, a team that beat us on their home court. We owe them one, I would think, and uh, trying to get some of that stuff going. You know, when I looked at the depth chart, and you announced your starters on Saturday, you had uh, Raquan Evans was not going to be available. Caleb Caleb was not going to be available because, of, well, he did try to play, as you mentioned, but he didn't play very many minutes. And then Malik Osborne, the story came out Friday night that he was done for the season, I say that's a, that's that's sixty percent of your roster. That's sixty percent of your starters that you've started every game this year, basically. Well, but that's that, that happens occasionally in in basketball and sports. Someone has to step up. You know, unfortunately, we have some inexperienced guys that have opportunity to gain some, get some experience, and there's no doubt it's going to make them better. Just the mental and the emotional adjustment that goes into uh, those types of challenges, and so um, we got to look past this. Put it behind us, learn from it, grow from it, and, and let's move on to the next game. Have you ever seen a team as hot as uh, Virginia Tech was on Saturday? They made 18 three-point shots, and two young men just uh, just did not miss. Uh, the the, the uh, freshman that came in off the bench, Padula, and then uh, we knew about Hunter Couture. We knew he was a good shooter, but good golly, <laughs> he, he, he didn't miss. Well, well, Gene, Gene, it's hard to go in the gym by yourself with no defense yeah. and make 18 out of 25 threes. Yeah. But, but that's the good thing about sports. You get into that focus. You get in that, what we call that level five focus, where you on point, where you you just feeling it. And then defensively, you, you have to step up to the plate. And, and I got to give those guys credit. They did an outstanding job. And, and hopefully we'll be better moving forward, understanding that there are moments that where you, when you're playing the game of basketball that you're going you're gonna to play against people who are, who are really, really shooting the ball very well, and they're not going to miss unless you unless you make them miss, and and that didn't happen on Saturday. Well, I don't think it's any consolation, coach, to you or to the team or the fans that follow Florida State and cheer for Florida State. But uh, that 18 made three-point shots. I don't know if you heard this today. I heard it on the radio. The, the 18 made three-point shots 
by uh, Virginia Tech on Saturday is a new ACC record for most made three-point shots in an ACC game. Well, I, I think did, we, I didn't know that at the time. We made 17, I believe, yeah. a few years ago. I, I think it might have been against Maryland, yeah. I believe. And, and, and if you look back at it, I believe uh, Notre Dame made 17 against us. Uh, yeah, when we, and we, we, we won in, in Tallahassee. You just got to give them credit, and you got to go back and watch the film, and we had some defensive laps. A lot of times you, you think it's, you're not contesting the shot, but a lot of it is you're not contesting the pass and they were able to get passes. However, I've never seen a team shoot threes off the dribble, creating them off the bounce. That's what, what was so spectacular uh, and special about how they scored their, their, their points. And you got to give guys credits when you get in that zone. Oh, boy, they, they were in the zone. Florida State will play uh, at Clemson on Wednesday. I mentioned that. And then on Saturday, I invite fans to come out a very special weekend. It's going to be the Seminole Basketball Reunion. We're going to, uh, we're going to hang uh, uh, George McLeod, number, number 21, at the Tucker Center. going to honor his jersey. And then he's got some of his teammates coming back. And uh, Charlie Ward's going to be there, Heisman Trophy winner. He was, he was on the team after George McLeod. But it's going to be a great weekend for all Florida State basketball fans because you're going to see some of the best of the best come back to the Tucker Center. Well, I always look forward to the, the reunion weekend because you, you get guys, you, you get to spend time with guys who made tremendous sacrifices and guys who shoulders we stand on. You know, they, they blazed the trail for us. And so uh, we, we got to honor them by spending some quality time with them and giving them a, a chance to come and hang out with, with each other and reminisce about the good old days. and. Maybe tell a few, stretch the truth a little bit. You know, they say the fist gets bigger <laughs> every time you tell the story. But but I also think that that this is a this is a great weekend that we get a chance to honor them and say thank you for your, all your hard work. George McLeod converted to four, from forward to a guard, a point guard at six foot nine. He was the tallest point guard I think in the old Metro Conference, and he could shoot the three-point shot. George McLeod returns to the Tucker Center, and he'll be cheering on the Knowles this coming Saturday. Hope you are there at the Tucker Center. By the way, uh, great crowd last weekend, Coach. You can't, you can't, uh, the crowd was in that ball game and screaming and hollering, making noise to the very final buzzer. I can't say enough about the support we've gotten from our fans. They have been tremendous, and I'm going to thank them and thank them and thank them for the support that they've given us over the years, and especially, you know, with the young team that we have. Florida State Athletics would like to thank Glory Days Grill here in Tallahassee, where we are tonight, Glory Days Grill, for their support of Seminole Athletics, Glory Days Tallahassee, the home of inside Seminole basketball. Keep it right here on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. to Glory Days Grill, where we go inside Seminole basketball every Monday night with head coach Leonard Haviland. We're here to talk about Florida State basketball. If you have a question, uh, submit them via Seminoles.com. Just click that Ask the Coach button, and we'll get your questions on the air. Our talk show originates from Glory Days, as I mentioned, 7 o'clock until 8 o'clock in the Eastern time zone. Uh, Planet Fitness on North Monroe invites you to their uh, February the 2nd, 2022 special event this week uh, to celebrate getting brand-new equipment on the day of twos. They are giving away twice the prizes. Stop by Wednesday, February 2nd, between 2 and 4 o'clock in the afternoon, where they will be raffling off giveaway items and free memberships. Plus, the FSU cheerleading team will be on site to join in the celebration. That's February the 2nd of 2022. I didn't think about that. 2 2 22. Golly, you want to write a check on that day and save it, I guess, huh? <laughs> That's Planet Fitness this coming February the 2nd. Groundhog's Day to boot. Coach, we're talking Florida State basketball, and we've got a big row ahead of us. I mean, we're halfway, a little more than halfway through the season. We've got a 20-game schedule. We're halfway through. We've got 10 games to go, and uh, we're going to start the second half of the season on the road. We'll talk more about Clemson a little bit later. But let's talk about some of these young guys 
some of these young guys you mentioned uh, because Caleb could not go. He played less than three minutes, tried to go. Uh, Raekwon in a bereavement, uh, he, he right now is just trying to get settled down. And then uh, you lose uh, Malik Osborne, our second leading scorer and top rebounder uh, to boot. And uh, so that mean additional minutes for some guy. Cameron Fletcher had twenty uh, had twenty two some minutes, and uh, how about Jalen Farley? Uh, Thirty two minutes. That's a new career a, a career high for him. These are guys that are getting more minutes because of the injuries. Well, I think you have to point out the fact that I thought that Naheem McLeod yeah. and, and, and Tanoa Nagam stepped up and filled in uh, for for Malik admirably. Mm-hmm. They did an outstanding job. I mean, uh, I, I think. Um, uh, Naheem, what was it, seven for seven and yeah, one, one for the free throw line? Well, he slam dunking about every time he gets the ball yeah. in his hands. But that, that, that's a, that shows progress that he's making, no doubt about that. Uh, he's And he, the guys that have more confidence in him, they are going to him a lot more. Uh, you see him stepping up. And I thought that, uh, that Gom, who's just kind of getting getting the, shaking the rust off, he's coming back giving us good effort as well. So that, those were bright spots. Now, there were – there were some learning issues that I felt that we, we, we obviously evaluated when we watched the films. But, but I, I, I like the effort. I like the, the, the camaraderie, the togetherness that our young players displayed. And, and I think we, what, we had three freshmen um, on the court. On, on the court. They all started. And, and so that, hopefully that will be positive as we continue to move forward. Not just freshman coach, but one-year players. I mean, first-year players at Florida State. And you mentioned Nahima Cloud. He, you're right. He made all seven. They were all slab dunks. He made a free throw and 15 points, a new career high, and over 20 minutes on the court. So all career best for a young man that just grow. He's seven foot four, coach. You have to look up to talk to him, don't you? But he he is developing. He's still growing, and I think you can see that he's getting better with each game. And you mentioned uh, 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 Tador and Gome. He had a concussion issue early, then he had a, a leg issue, and missed. He's missed 11 games. So he basically is just getting his basketball feedback, basketball. No back. doubt about that. But the fact that he was able to go in. And contribute. That means that you know that position might be. It's going to be. They're going to handle that position. I think very well. What where we're hurting is just experience, making good decisions, uh, being confident in the decisions that you make, going to the free throw line, and not being wrapped up emotionally. You know that's part of the, the growing up. That's why you need a little more experience to get through that. But uh, I think that that's why I say that I think we're going. Those guys will be a little more relaxed going. Moving forward. Coach, uh, uh, i got a stat sheet right here, and I look all over the place. I don't see anything. There's no such thing as a stat for energy. <laughs> but in the game against Virginia Tech and also in that game against Georgia Tech, I thought that Cameron Fletcher came in and gave us a little bit of en- energy and a little bit of spark at both ends of the court. Well, that's a great observation. And the way we have built our program, we like for our guys to give, you know, four to five minutes of, of uh, all-out effort. And then we like for them to go in and guys come, other guys come in the game and, and give them relief. And depends on what their condition level is or, or where they are in terms of or their maturity and their ability to, to contribute. You know, we play that by ear. But I don't like to play guys seven, eight minutes without giving them a, a blow. And I thought that when the game was 62 60, I, I, I thought that they were fresher than we were. And we were playing guys more minutes than what we've been accustomed to play and, 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 and in relation to how we like to play. Now, some guys, some programs, they, they play guys 32, 33, mm-hmm. 34, 35 minutes. But we, we normally have not done that, and I think that's one reason why some of our guys have been able to play very hard during a lot of stages of the game. I think we've been able to pull a lot of close games out because we've tried to keep guys fresh. We didn't have the luxury of doing that this past weekend, and um, that, those are adjustments that hopefully we'll, we'll make uh, a little better moving forward. Florida State basketball is the subject. You're hearing Coach Leonard Hamilton talk about his basketball team, and uh, we take on Clemson on the road, Little John Coliseum on Wednesday. That game tips off at 7 o'clock. And then on Saturday, the big show, FSU versus Virginia Tech at the Donald L. Tucker Civic Center, tip off at 12 High noon basketball reunion. We'll talk more about that. Our special guest from the administration side of Florida State basketball is Vanessa Fuchs, and she'll be joining us a, a little later on at tonight's show. And the senior administrator of Florida State, she played basketball at FSU. We'll talk about women's hoops, men's hoops, and a lot more when Vanessa joins us on this show. Planet Fitness is a proud partner of the Florida State Seminoles. At Planet Fitness, gain access to a clean and spacious club with tons of equipment of the one and only judgment-free zone for just $10 a month. 
all for just 10 bucks a month. Go Knowles, and don't forget 2222 coming up this Wednesday at Planet Fitness. Keep it right here on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Centerville. If you don't know where we are, Google it. Come meet us on Monday night and talk hoops with Florida State head coach Leonard Hamilton. We'll have time. We'll have. A, I think we've got a, a. I'm looking through a camera, but I believe we have a fan with a question for Coach Ham. Go ahead, identify yourself and ask Coach Ham a question. I got Mr. Ron over here. Gene, what you got for Mr. Ron? I have Coach Hamilton. As we welcome back our basketball alumni, honor George McLeod with his jersey celebration, and honor the 50th anniversary of the 1972 national runner-up team. What does the support of all those alumni players mean to your program? Well, I've been, I've been very pleased and happy with the support we've gotten from our alumni. There's no doubt about it, especially guys who are off that team. You, you know, that's, that's a tremendous honor. When, they, when you play college basketball, at the end of the year, there's only one person is going to be able to stand up and have that finger up saying that I'm number one. Now, they didn't win the national title, but, but they, they came off of close. And so you have to honor those guys for making that accomplishment. In, in other words, there are times we have about 380 teams in, the, in, the, in Division I college basketball. Some teams never even make the NCAA tournament. So to get to the Final Four is a tremendous accomplishment, memories that you'll keep forever. And obviously we're trying to emulate that. We're trying to uh, represent them by at some point getting to the Final Four ourselves and win a national title. The interesting thing is that every school in America, all 381, to start up the season off with the hopes of winning a national title. And, and, and when you only have one team that can stand up with that finger, that's a tremendous accomplishment. I think that's why college basketball is so entertaining and so exciting for people all over the country that you, know, you get a chance to see those brackets and you, you work all year long to try to make sure that you end that that group of 68 teams that I get a chance to participate in the final, in the national NCAA tournament. So it, it represents all what's good uh, about college basketball. And for us to be able to say uh, thank you for a job well done, and then for us as a team that represent Florida State, it's important uh, that we know that we stand on some big shoulders that have that have come off close to winning the national title. It kind of inspires us, motivates us to, to want to. Hopefully one day when we come back and, and we're telling those fish tales about how great we were, <laughs> you know, we, be, we come back stretching the truth because no one will be able to remember what, it, what actually happened, that we'll have something positive to cheer about and people will, will recognize us for a job well done. Thank you, Coach. Thank, Thank you, you for asking. Ron, thanks for your question. And if you have a question, uh, Coach is available on Monday nights here at Glory Days Grill. And, Bring the questions up, and uh, Tucker will get you on there. By the way, during the commercial breaks, we have giveaways. We give away T-shirts, all sorts of good stuff. And uh, you have to answer a trivia question, which means you have to have a little bit of knowledge about Florida State basketball. And uh, Ron brought up, you know, we, we're going to talk continually. But, see, I don't think we talk about it enough, Coach, about the reunion that's coming up. And I see Isaiah Swan is going to be here. I remember Isaiah Swan, Jordan Bolton, uh, Will Miles will be in attendance. And, oh, oh by the way, we're going uh, to honor the jersey of George McLeod. And uh, I see Charlie Ward is there. And how about Hall of Famer Harry Davis? You may remember Harry Davis. I think I was just starting to play broadcast basketball with Harry. was a true freshman. Uh, he's in the Hall of Fame. Skip Young's in the Hall of Fame at Florida State. Uh, Irv Thomas, one of my favorite scouts, L.A. Lakers scouts. And he's always at the top. He loves coming back home. And, oh, by the way, if you speak Italian, I guess he and Anthony Polite will get together because <laughs> Irv played in Italy and picked up a little bit of a leg. Come on, I always ask him, are you doing well? Uh, okay. He answers in Italian. I can't understand a word he says. But it's the reunion that's coming up. And, oh, by the way, Coach, Coach, I know you were watching intently when Florida State played UCLA in 1972 for the national championship. But this is the 50th anniversary of that battle against the two Giants, Florida State from the East, UCLA. We had to play them on their home court, on their home town. But we came close to winning a national championship. It's the 53, 50th anniversary of that team. Well, that, I've, I've talked to a lot of those guys and. They, they really, really uh, uh, 
enjoyed the experience. And it, it kind of gets you adrenaline flowing, knowing that you have a chance to go out and, and hopefully one day make those guys proud of us for what we, we're, able, we're trying to accomplish. So it, it, it's, it's interesting to see those guys with, with their chest stuck out knowing that, that they were here and they represented Florida State in an outstanding fashion. There's another player that I failed to mention, and he played basketball and football at Florida State. And ended up as the most viable. Oh, he was the starting quarterback for Tampa Bay in Super Bowl 30. Brad Johnson, Brad the Bulls coming back to Tallahassee. Now tell me about that shot that he made that was so famous. Uh, he he – he, he made a big contribution in a big game one time. What was that about? Well, I can't remember the game you're talking about, but I will tell you this, and this is a true fact. He swears by this. <laughs> Pee Wee basketball, high school basketball, college basketball, Brad Johnson says he never missed a technical free throw. <laughs> I don't know whether that's good or bad, but he never missed one when well, he was called on to shoot a technical. Well, you know, my father used to tell the story about when he went fishing that he, he <laughs> caught this fish and he looked on the right side of the boat and saw one eye and looked on the other side of the boat and saw the other eye. So, you know, that, that might be one of those kind of stories. <laughs> Your dad's name wasn't Jonah, was it? <laughs> Jonah and the whale. Oh, you never know what you're going to hear on Inside Seminole Basketball Monday nights here at uh, Glory Days Grill. Florida State basketball is our subject. A uh, little later on, about two segments from now, we'll uh, speak with Vanessa Fuchs, a senior administrator, senior athletic director at Florida State University. And uh, we've got some more tales to tell. Fish tales? No, basketball tales. Simply IOA is giving you the chance to win Seminole's courtside seats. Prize includes courtside seats for you and three friends to an FSU home basketball game versus an ACC opponent. And uh, that's in February, so the month of February starts. So if you're the winner, you got a chance to pick your game and come see the Knowles play an ACC foe. Enter now at simplyioa.com backslash Knowles. Keep it right here on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Welcome back to Glory Days Grill, Tallahassee, Florida. That's where we are talking Seminole basketball on a Monday night with head coach Leonard Hamilton. And if you have a question, send them in via Seminoles.com and we'll get them on the air on Monday night. I want to thank the uh, Golden Girls dance team here tonight representing Florida State Golden Girls. Give a big hand out for the young ladies here tonight and, uh, during the trivia contest. I think they're presenting the uh, prizes and everything. Like Great job, ladies. Good to see you here tonight. Coach, uh, you look at the – you look at the ACC standing. Now, we're halfway through the season, and uh, the team on top of the standings is a team that we defeated twice. In fact, Miami is the number one team in the conference, and the only team to beat Miami this year is Florida State. We beat them by one point and one point. Well, this is a new ACC uh, picture that we're dealing with now, and I've, I've said all along th that it's going, over a number of years you can see that there's reshuffling of the deck. Mm -hmm. It used to always be the same top two or three schools that are that are always somewhere around the top, and now you see other schools finding ways to be a lot more competitive. And and what has happened is you have some of the most rich traditional and successful basketball programs in the history of college basketball. You know, those of us who were Johnny Come Lately or to the ACC, they're kind of helping us, pulling us up to where they have. The space that they've enjoyed, and, and how do I, why do I say that? There was a time when, when Florida State was in the Dixie Conference. Yeah. That was a long time 50s, ago. Uh -huh. That was a long. They were in uh, the, the Metro. Metro, and they they were independent at one point. 